This episode of Speakers of Fidelin is made possible by our generous patrons. Special thanks to our supreme and master speakers, Omage Cat Comet, Erizu Yamakawa, Circuit Barakil, Remy Asalia, Arcadia Lunashine, Alex Franco AV, Winebow Brood, Psyche, Asuta Starbreeze, Cletus Oreo, Nina Grimstarter, Nat Clay, Lily Black, Bob Cece, Mikta Rapuntau, Sapa Chakwatol, Edwin, Umbral Wind, Quick Levin, Pamela Isley, Camille Grinnell, Elenriel Maximus, Codrith Novelis, Mira Mary, Bay Barbalay, Suno Chicano, Celestau Notrell, Lazy Boy, A Bag of Dragonite, Luke Osborne, Pandalu Storm Arrow, Tex, Yowie Wowie, Kai Lin, AJ Brainswordson, Anathus Moonscar, Arthur Law, Beridan Derard, and Saipup. Support the show and become a patron today at patreon.com slash speakersxiv. Thank you. This is Speakers of Violence. Good evening, Aorcians. Welcome to Speakers of Fidelin, episode 282. I am Lakeel Bravestone, and I'm joined today by Georgi Wiston and Mela Vanadar. Welcome. It is Hello. January 15th, 2022, um, and it is um, uh, January 15th. <laughs> I always want to say that there's something after that. Like, this is the day of... Reckoning. Main topics today. Yoshi P has released a huge uh, statement uh, about server expansion, and um, we'll talk about that. It's uh, actually quite interesting um, what's, uh, what they've announced, um, especially for Europe. Uh, we'll get to that, um, but it's actually it's interesting for all regions, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll get to that. Uh, we'll also read some uh, information that we got from the Radio Mog Station live streaming event thing uh, that's been going oh, on. Yeah. I'm sure you've all seen it. Like you've seen the thing, but you've clicked on it. And it's like oh, it's all in Japanese, and it, it, it's just this thing that's happening. It's and like there's no slides. How am I supposed to understand this? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but don't worry. We've got the best bits ready for you. So we'll talk about that and discuss it. Um, yes. Uh, so uh, also we'll be reading Mogmail. Speakersxavi.com slash Mogmail. Now, I was wondering, why are we not getting Mogmails? Well, enough. Or many. Or any at all. Um, well, it turns out the website, of course, is a little wibbly-wobbly sometimes. Uh, because it updates without telling me. Shout out to our uh, host. Um, the <laughs> the uh, that means that sometimes it just kind of crashes on like it it doesn't load when you enter the address. So it says like you can't we can't find the page. You can just wait a couple of seconds and it'll be there. Oh. I have fixed it now. It, it it appears as normal now. But every now and then it'll do that. Just wait us one second and it'll re it'll re update. Um, anyways. Uh, stay tuned for the post-show, reading questions from the Syndicate, um, and that's that. Well, actually, I will mention this uh, while I'm here. My computer has been a problem for a while, right? We've talked about this before, and I've said, you know, I I'm keeping it together uh, somehow. <clears throat> well, we have reached the end of this computer's life. Uh, I... I, it's a miracle we can even run this. Uh, you can see that Georg is actually crusty. And I think that might be the computer just chugging along, just not being able mm. to render <laughs> this in full HD. So, yeah, um, but I'm pretty much, you're I think, crisp 14, as 40p. always. Yeah, you're fucking crisp, dude. <laughs> um, so uh, I have finally ordered a new computer. So uh, that is the end of the era of this computer, which probably was last updated... Uh, and them off. I don't think people can hear it on the stream. Um, oh. um, this has been probably... I think the last time this had an update, like proper update, was in like 2017 or 18. 
So, oh, so it's a nice, yeah, every five years or so it's good for it's, an upgrade. Yeah, because yeah, usually what I do is yes. I would upgrade the up components when they needed to be upgraded, but we live in a time when that mm. is impossible, and so I have, they've, they're have they way over to, overdue now. Uh, so anyways, that has caused some issues, especially with the playthrough of Endwalker, which has suddenly stopped mysteriously. Um, that's because I literally can't render it. Like, I try to render it, and everything crashes after, like, 30 minutes. So, that Explain is Explain how why. you render the podcast. So, there is a problem with my CPU. It is not... my Well, it's my CPU and my GPU. So, um, when I'm rendering or exporting, uh, the, um, the, the software tends to crash at around an hour, an hour and a half mark. So what, <laughs> so what I do is when I have to render the podcast, I will render it in, in bits, in segments. So I'll render like an hour or an hour and a half, and then I'll, I'll render the, the remaining part. So these are now two files. Then I slap the two files together, and when I render that into one piece, it works. That means I have to render the podcast three times, <laughs> which, hmm, I can't wait to not do that anymore. Uh, anyways, yes, so uh, I don't know if it'll be ready by next week, but definitely uh, the week after for sure. So uh, hang in there, everyone. We'll be back with things again shortly. Um, all right, let's jump into a recent events. All right, so uh, we'll start today's recent events with All Saints Week, which is coming up on uh, January 20th. <laughs> it's weird. It's on Thursday, January 30th. Halloween, everyone, um, <laughs> uh, at uh, 8 uh, a.m. GMT uh, until February 2nd, until 2.59 uh, p.m. GMT. Yeah, that's right. The main the the theme of All Saints Wake this year are clowns. Uh, that's pretty scary. Yeah, the quest title is All Clowns Wake. So, well, yeah, it's weird having All Saints Wake in January. Um, we probably don't have to point that out, uh, but I also wonder. I still find it weird that they're still doing it, but I'm glad we're getting it. Don't get me wrong, but it's I still it's weird. Uh, the rewards this year, <clears throat> pumpkin and <laughs> pumpkin and clown outfit is uh, what we're getting. Uh, um, um, that's it. That's all we know. I think the boots are quite quite usable outside of the outfit. I think the I think the top is not very appealing. Uh, the boots are, are very non-clownish. I'm imagining the top hat, if you toggle visor off, will remove the nose. Oh, yeah, possibly. So well, we yeah, the, head, the yeah. Head, headpiece would be fine. I'm yeah. talking about, like, the Oh, the jump, piece. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, should, we definitely <laughs> have, to, me we definitely yeah, have to mention that. Uh, so you're getting the outfit, but you're also getting the makeup. You're getting the face paint, mm. which uh, I feel like you're... That even is a thing. I feel like Yogi's right. just getting crustier and crustier. Is Yorgi, he needs some is Yorgi crusty on, on yours, Mela? Or is it just on mine? Yeah, mind? he's fairly crusty, but... Okay, all right. Um, well, okay. We're, we're, most people have us on in the background. It doesn't matter. Um, all right. I just wanted to know that my Discord isn't dying. Uh, all right. Um, so, yeah, we're getting face paint. First time since 2014. Uh, I don't remember. That long ago. The first Was it the was first... It the first? first or second? All Saints... All Saints mm. Wake, yeah, which was the cobweb and the bats. Yes. Yeah. Maybe they'll come back this year. <sighs> oh, spooky. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe they'll end up on. Can the you buy them? Lodestone. So, no, Lodestone. Uh, the uh, no, online you, store. They're not on the Lodestone. They're one of the few things that are just unobtainable. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. They'll probably get added. There's a um, uh, um, online store maintenance in a few days, so they'll probably be added to that. It's weird that it hasn't been actually. It's weird because I don't. It's why not sell face paints? I yeah. guess why would not popular enough? Why now? You know, I mean, why now? After all these years, would they add it to the mug state? Mm. Mm. True. That's true. Um, there's also not only there's a, an outside and an inside pumpkin item, yes. which is nice. There is um, with the little yin and yang ghosts. 
whatever well, they called. I was very confused by this because it is not listed. I don't think it's listed in the uh, as a. It is. It, oh, is it? It is. It is oh, it's just it's missing from the notes. Just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's that's nice. Um, the the inside one is like a flower uh, pot, yeah, which is cute. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's that. That's All Saints Wake. Uh, we're going to move on to something that we're just going to mention because I think it's funny because this channel has uh, sort of um, made fun of this before. But um, Mahjong Tournament uh, on Saturday, yes. January 22nd. Uh, that's JP only. Um, this is my fan fest. I love this. Oh, this is the biggest tournament of the year, guys. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, that's on January twenty second at one p.m. Uh, Japan time. Uh, yeah, watch it on Nico Nico. Um, you play in Mahjong. Who are the guests. I, uh, the guests are. I guess the guest is the uh, is Alfino's. Um... Alfino Leveo. Um... <laughs> Uh, Alfino's voice actor and um, Matsuno, Matsuno and uh, Yosuke Saito, Saito from Nier. They couldn't be bothered. I don't think they'd have been able to get old uh, Yoko. Oh my god, he'd be so much. He'd be so annoying. Yeah, yeah. The four hours <laughs> of Mahjong. Yeah. I don't know why you would. Watch I mean, this. if you're a fan of someone, you will watch them do literally anything. Well, that is true. So, well, also, if you're a fan of Mahjong, you might enjoy it. And I that mean, too, Mila, that's a bonus. Rollo, a bonus. Yeah. Rollo has friends that join Three. this game to play Mahjong. Yeah, <laughs> apparently it's such a good implementation yeah. that it is a popular thing. So that's, yeah, cool. Yeah. It's cool. All right, uh, so there you go. Uh, look forward to that. That was on January 22nd at 1 p.m. Japan time. Moving on, uh, the Endwalker original soundtrack uh, will go on sale on the 23rd of February this year. Uh, this has 62 tracks from Endwalker, um, starting with the main theme. Endwalker, the album is packed with many tracks that are sure to stir memories of your adventures throughout the expansion, from the music of, uh, of locales to those in the Pandemonium Raid Dungeon. Furthermore, the album also includes a music video and a chiptune version of Endwalker, as well as performance footage of the Primals, the band led by sound director Masayoshi Soken. Uh, so, yeah, Wednesday the 23rd of February for Europe, I guess. Um, so, uh, here uh, you also get this. This is very important. In-game item. You get this. Mm -hmm. A wind-up retra minion. That's quite cool. <clears throat> yeah. The only thing I don't like about this soundtrack is that it's the same color as the Heavenswood one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I see that. I yeah. don't like that. But yeah, you can otherwise it's cool. kind of see it there. Yeah, mm -hmm. the record, the primal's recording comes from the Chinese fan fest. Oh, interesting. Uh, cool. Is the global fan fest one available somewhere? Their performance? <sighs> maybe it's know. on the fourteen channel, or maybe it's in a different soundtrack they released. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Possibly, I don't know. I don't keep There'd up. Being to... some of those, um, you remember yeah, there were the I ones mean... about like the the. Uh, trial battle ones and stuff oh yeah maybe it was part of the the 5.5 soundtrack actually mm. oh yeah possibly yeah um okay so there you go that's that uh now we're going to move on to uh the uh the radio mog station uh stuff um so yeah radio mog station is i'm gonna get well it's it's like um it's actually it was on the radio uh apparently uh um, wow yeah it, it was a uh, i think they collaborated with like japan radio or something there was something something like that um but it's also a podcast i think like there's a lot here <laughs> it's a very it's a lot um but it's radio a digital radio station i don't know mm. it probably is i mean i don't know oh, that less cool if so i mean it's still cool yeah but I if mean, it was on like oh. That would be so you know, fascinating radio. if it was on the, on the AM or the FUM. Yeah, that would be crazy. Oh my god, I closed the show notes. Disaster strikes. Wow, Disaster has struck the, the production of Speakers of Heidelin, episode 282. <laughs> Live wow. on the air. I have lost my show notes. Mayday. They got a lot of information out on um, upcoming 7.0 stuff. Um, yeah, yes, that's and right. And then a lot of questions about 
what happened in in Endwalker. Yes, it, it's so we will go through that. Th thank you, Mela. I, I I recovered my show notes. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So uh, yes, like Mela said, there's a lot of information here. Uh, so uh, we just have to dive into it. It's all sort of uh, not in chronological order. It's a little bit from here and there. So keep that in it's mind. It's more I guess. so sorted by the type of information than when it was said during the uh, yeah podcast, radio show, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, Yoshi P was joined also. Besides the host, he was also joined by Thancred and Pryles, a Japanese voice actors. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, here we go. Let's start off with the fact that Kryle became an important character as a bridge between Vena and the Warrior of Light. Well, that's, I you mean, did. that just happened. It's just fact, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's more like a statement of fact. Um, but uh, Nakamura was surprised at the amount of fully voiced cutscenes this time, which... Thancred's voice actor. That's Thancred's voice actor, yes. Um, that's um, true, um, there was a lot of voiced cuts. I mean, a lot of voiced cut scenes. More than yeah, that. Yeah, there weren't. Yeah, it was surprising, actually. Yeah. Um, there was... I mean, I don't know how much we... Like, how big... Like, can we mention that every time? Like, oh, there's so many voiced cut scenes. At this point, it's kind of weird to keep mentioning that. Because... At, should be standard now that most cuts. I didn't are really think of it at the time, but I suppose when you go back and replay and go through all the side quests instead, you think, oh yeah, yeah, we're very lucky in the MSQ. Actually. Yes, yes, because I'm kind of sad. Mm. We're not going to talk about the uh, job quests in this podcast. It'll probably be a couple more weeks or maybe more. It depends. I don't know. We haven't really decided on that, but um, I'm, I was very sad when playing through. Uh, I've only done the healer one so far. I'm sad that. That it is not voiced. Oh, agreed. Yeah, th it yes. would have been better voiced. Um, okay, uh, Nakamura asked what happened to the original story planned for the Asians back in the Realm Reborn, to which Yoshida replied, it was done away with, and work on creating the current lore started in 3.x. Makes sense. That's when the war area's darkness started to become more relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if uh, that's brought up again here, but uh, someone brought up like the way that they speak. Is that in the notes here? Um, yeah, they have their own language. Yeah, they if you remember a Realm Reborn Asians, they spoke a, like a completely different language, and that's been retconned. That's just don't not don't worry about it uh, mm. at this point. Don't don't think about the giant purple zodiac crystal. No, no. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Don't uh, think about the hundreds and hundreds of Asians that were no. in that room. No, 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 no. With everyone? It means nothing. Uh, they killed most they... of the important ones, probably. Yeah, they had like a whole society, like the Asian Council. They had their own bedrooms and stuff and everything. It was yeah. stupid. It w oh, well. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Yeah, yeah. I do, yeah. Anyways, uh, the key word of Endwalker is despair. By chance, the scenario team, including Yoshida, gathered together people with similar thoughts, and this is how the current story was completed. Similar thoughts. People who were also despairing. Yeah, despair. Let's get some sad people together. <laughs> I imagine study them. they were experiencing a lot of despair around yeah. 5.2, Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Um, right, so Heidelin, uh, Heidelin, uh, Heidelin being Vena wasn't the plan from the start, but it was decided along the way. Depend. I, I wonder when? what that means. Yeah, when? At what point uh, did they make that decision? Um, mm, that's good. Yeah, I think probably not as early. They probably did that quite late, I imagine. Probably yeah. during like the production of Enwar, because. Mm. Yeah, they don't really think, mention her that much. Do you not think that Vanar was Heidelin at the point of 5.2? Because I don't think so. No. No. I might have decided that possibly afterwards. Yeah. yeah I would agree. Because 5.2 was when she was introduced, wasn't it? Vanar? Yes. Yeah. In academia. Not academia. Uh, and Lisa Senator. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they didn't know that. Yeah. I don't think they, they knew that. Uh, until the last moment, uh, there was a wavering uh, whether to put Finn. <laughs> Or the end of Hydlin and Zodiac arc at the end of Endwalker. Well, I'm glad they picked the first one because I would be infinitely annoyed if it said oh. end of Hydlin and Zodiac arc uh, at the end there. 
They might, I, might have chosen chosen a more uh, nicely phrased sentence. If they I went with the latter. I I said this before, and I'll say it again. I think it's funny when people put Finn at the end of the of like movies because it's so. Yeah, as, 1920s. That's, it's what film students put at the end of their films to make them feel like more professional. Uh, and to me, that's <laughs> it, it's just yeah, it's funny to me. Uh, Finn, it's like oh, I'm a professional filmmaker. I put Finn at the end of my movie. Um, Would you have liked the end more? What? Would you have liked them to say the end more? Yes, the end would have been. Not everyone's better. French. So it is. It's always it is an odd choice, really, isn't it? Yeah. Also, I think it's funny then uh, when it's, it says Finn because uh, it's it's not an English word. So no, for me, like on or something. I automatically default to my own language. In which case, that just means fine. That's just <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> it, was, it was fine. Yeah. yeah I guess. I guess it was. Yeah. And we think of fish. <laughs> I mean, the the decision for Finn here might be related to the Japanese's obsession with French culture. That's possible. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Anyways, yes. Uh. I'm. Uh, well, if those were the choices, I think Finn was better than. Mm. I, I mean, they could have worded phrased it differently, but yeah. Yeah, I can understand why they would consider the second one because Finn can, can provide a lot of people with a jumping off point. Like, oh, yeah, this That's true. Finn yeah. Was over. Yeah. 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 Uh, the story developments from here on out, this is big, uh, here on out and 7.0 have generally been decided. Mm. This matches what they normally say about how early they plan stories. Yeah, but the, I'm super, yeah, yeah, yeah. But up until, this the, one up until been now, though, up until now, they've had a general idea of what the story has to be. Now they're like, mm. they have to start from scratch, essentially, with the story, which is interesting that they've already... F so that, you know, I think they probably have had this, like, idea of what to do next before, like, li earlier. But now they've, like, decided on this is the direction we're going. It's probably why they wanted to end this goddamn story arc. Because <laughs> they're like, oh, can we just do this already? Um, mm. So, yeah, they, they have a plan now. Um, general plan for where to go. Um, that's exciting. Mm. Um, it was... This is an, also an interesting uh, thing that I... Um, I'm not surprised, but it's it's interesting. It was always planned that Emmett would turn out to be this kind of character. The plans didn't change after he became popular. Uh, there were requests for merch to be made of him, but it was declined since he still had a role to play. So that explains why they didn't more. milk Emmett. <laughs> they can uh, milk him now, though. They can now, but I mean, it explains why there wasn't like a lot of Emmett mm -hmm. sells merch before. No, there's not very much Emmett sells merch from his Garlean appearance besides the uh, the standee. You're right. Yes. The yeah. acrylic block. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not an acrylic block. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. Uh, acrylic block, to be fair, is much better, Mela. You know oh, that. Oh, agreed. You know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> An acrylic block is less likely to snap in half. True. Uh, True. Our acrylic block will last forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, all right. Uh, Yoshida said when he checked the art, uh, Hithlodius looked too young. No, no, no. Hithlodius, sorry, looked too young. He imagined him more as a far-sighted adult who's the type to fool around. Staff imagined him as... That Japanese word dictionary gives this uh, as a man of gentle manners, man of delicate features. Yoshida, uh, Yoshida says, among the ancients, uh, Hislodeus is the most irresponsible and scary guy. It's I don't know what he means. Like there's a feminine, uh, a, a more effeminate woman, a uh, man. Sorry. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Yeah. I but. I don't think but Yoshida did irresponsible not and way. scary guy. Mm. He never came across like that, ever. Um, I mean, like he does things. A he bit does of a, a lot of things that he's not supposed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he's bends was never the rules supposed to him. give. Yeah, he was never supposed to give Azem a, a concept to stop a volcano. Right. No. True. True. But I think scary, especially <laughs> is a. An yeah. odd choice scary is a weird choice of words i wonder if that's part of the translation Possibly. I, I would hazard yeah 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 um the scenes in old charlian of scions visiting your room the scene of Estinian jumping out of the window <laughs> cost the most to make uh nakamura picked <laughs> thancred the stupid thing to say nanju picked yestola and mats i'm assuming are these um 
uh, the hosts, maybe? Of... Not Sazao, uh, no, Nakamura is Thancred's voice actor. Yeah, yeah, Nanjo I is Kryles, and, oh. Na- and Matsuzawa is the host. Oh, okay. Matsuzawa is the host. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, voice actor picking his own character. I like that. That's so funny. <laughs> it's funny because he knows what he's saying. Yeah. He's going, he knows what he's going to say. Oh, he just loves hearing him, himself talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's also that funny that... Horrible. These... Yeah, go on. Like, listening, playing a game and listening to your own acting within it, I would find that uncomfortable a bit. Yeah. I don't really like listening to myself, like, no. a recording. I hate editing these episodes, for instance. But, um, yeah... And also, when you know the... Li- I mean, maybe it's different. Like, when you recorded the lines, you kind of want to see it in-game. Mm-hmm. I guess there's something to that. True, because you don't... You just read them. Yeah. You don't have any context, really, when you're doing it, I suppose. Right, yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah, it's also interesting that uh, Estin and Jumping Out of the Window is the most expensive, because mm. obviously that's mo Have you seen... Yeah? Have you seen what he wears? No, hey, I have not seen that. He wears no. fucking Laguna. He wears Laguna's himbo shirt. Oh, what? The choice. <laughs> Why? That's weird. That's just like casual wear. That's odd. Well, it's just not. It's strange because it's not the only casual wear he has. He wears something different when he's with Alphano at the mansion. That's true. That's a little t- sneaky one, just for those special yeah. few who pick him. I mean. Uh, I understand why he's wearing a casual outfit. It would be weird if he walked up to your room in a set of armor in the yeah. middle of the night. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, the recent... Cr- this is funny. The recent Kryle isn't in the key Bad. art. <laughs> she was meant to be Shit. drawn directly below the Na. But when the order for the art was made, it was forgotten to include... They forgot to include her. By the time the mistake was realized, the art had just been finished. That's so sad. Justice yeah. for Kryle. I was wondering this for the longest time. I thought Kryle deserved greater representation in, in the promotion of this expansion. And it all makes sense to me now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Re-release it with Kryle in it. I demand it. Uh, that'd be weird for them to like, re-release that now. But that's sad. Well, um, they'll sell it as a poster one day probably or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my and god! It'll just be sad. And then the people that have the original, like the, they'll they'll first sell the original one, and then they'll just stop selling the original one, send the trial one, and then you have the valuable one without oh. trial. I have missing trial. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hope, Thousand pounds. I hope trial. <laughs> I hope trial gets to appear on the next uh, expansion poster. They probably no, yeah. they'll forget to put her on, even though she's actually the main character. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then when seven point oh comes out, there'll just be speech bubbles, but there's no Kryle. They forgot to put Kryle in the game. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, uh, all right. Let's move on. Um, this is about the s- probably skip the first one. Okay, um, six point oh story. Uh, Hitler Deus initial concept. Oh, this is the same. Wait, which one is the... It's the same thing, but it's probably phrased better than how it was before. All right. His Lodea's initial concept was thought by Yoshi P to be A. Isn't he looking uh, effeminate there? Uh, Yoshi P thought Hithlodius was more philosophical, yet mischievous type of character. See, that's more accurate to what I imagined Yoshi P was saying. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I still think... I I don't... I think what they ended up with was fitting for his character in the end. It, yeah, it mm-hmm. felt like him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people's rating on Hermes was half half, pretty divisive. Like love, Good. hate, I guess. What way? That's Which, fine. Like um, in his, in terms of his character, in terms of his role, because he, I don't think his character is inherently supposed to be likable. Well, I think his that's... character was isn't likable, but they they made that come across quite well. But his role, I just don't like him that much sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty uh, pretty good if they manage to get it like 50-50 because that's kind of what I'd want out of his character. Like some people will love him, some will hate him. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. Because I know people love him. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that. Uh, all right, moving on. There are several flag management to all cutscenes in 6.0. And if you clear old content, for example, Void Arc, right after the end of Endwalker, it'll be flagged and a different version of the cutscene will play if you replay the same scene. Oh, what? so if you clear... Um, oh, like the when the sky pirates don't appear if you've not done Void Arc. Right, so if you clear right. it the first time and you haven't done it, 
you don't get the cutscene. But if you then go and clear it and then go back and watch the cutscene again, you'll have it. It'll show you That's that. That's nice. Scene. Yeah. So because there's probably a few characters I was missing, but yeah. I think the only thing that was different between my main and my alt was that I'd done Eureka on my main, so it didn't doesn't bring up Educates and Jika. Oh, uh, right. Because of the lack of the Eureka storyline. That makes sense, yeah. Hmm. Yoshi P got his communication skill from his mother, who works uh, as the saleswoman for an insurance company. Okay. That's the best part of this whole interview. Nice. Where did you get your great communication skills? Yeah. Uh, well, my mother, the saleswoman for an insurance company. The side, quest, the side quest for 6.0 areas was created to unlock level to level based on MSQ progression in order to not destroy the immersion. See, this is something I noticed. Um, particularly yes. with the availability of hunt and hunt marks, um, in... Shadowbringers, you can obtain the third level of hunt marks before you reach the Tempest. And if you oh. look through the options, which I did, I was like, oh, okay. So the final zone is probably underwater. Oh, that's upsetting. Oh. In in Endwalker, you cannot obtain the hunt mark bills until you reach a certain point within each of the zones right. that they include marks from. Mm -hmm. That's very clever. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm glad they figured that out. Yeah. Um, okay. Yoshi P is aware of the voices that state the lack of battle content music due to putting too much effort into the main MSQ side. Uh, wait, hold on. Oh, to the people that complain that there's not enough... To the lack of battle New content battle music. music. So See, that... I think that might be related to Pandemonium in the sense that there's only three songs... There's only two, like, raid songs this time. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, possible. Ah, uh, I don't know. Or it, could also, just... it could also be uh, related to how the, the two first trials only have one fa one phase of music rather than two. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't really mind. No. No, I don't mind either. Um, okay, moving on. Regarding Matsya. Uh, oh. The scene where Matsya holding the baby while running was a tearjerker scene that the dev, huh? the dev team cried while creating it. Um, Nakamura-san thought that due to how 14 has too many cases of people not being saved, so he thought Matsya would fall into the same fate. Matsya's acting was superb during that part. Um, yeah, uh, it's a good scene, and I also mm -hmm. I thought he would, him and the baby. I thought he wasn't die. gonna. Yeah. Um, I thought that would have been much too dark <clears throat> for this game. <laughs> And well, I they're not afraid of doing really dark shit. Yeah, I know, but have they ever killed a baby before? They killed very young children. Children have died. Yes, but that's different. Is mm, okay. Maybe Matsya would have like turned, and the baby would have fallen, and that's still sad yeah. that he's gone. But yeah. yeah, maybe crushing the baby under his foot would have been a bit much. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> well, we uh, yeah. Matsuya's voice actor in Japanese sounds much younger than his English voice actor. I think that's an issue that is sometimes not re not transferred over into the English voice acting is that characters that are supposed to be young often or sometimes end up sounding much older than they are. Elizabeth being the prime example. Mm. Yeah, I guess. I didn't think well I still thought he sounded young he I mean, sounded quite young and very nervous I feel like because there's I've always the thing, said it, I think the English voice acts in this game are, are probably the best option for me sometimes there's a lot more diversity yeah because I think when as a western audience I, th I don't know I haven't heard his Japanese voice but when I hear that you say that the Japanese is yet sounds younger I think I have a pretty good idea of what that sounds like and I think that would be weird mm -hmm. in the western localization if you know what I mean I don't, yeah. If it's like anime, don't young, say what you mean. Is, is that what we're talking? I don't know. I don't know if that's. I haven't heard it, so I can't judge that. But, anyways, uh, yeah, th I think that's why, in general, they always go, mm, let's not do that. Let's make them sound a little older. But, yeah. All right. He's a massive elephant. Yes, he is. Fair. Yeah, he is an elephant. Um, that being said, though, to give uh, the Japanese uh, voices uh, some credit. I prefer 
Yu Yu Hase's deep ass voice <laughs> in Around well, Reborn. See, that's the thing. The Japanese, despite the fact that like you, people might might often like criticize the Japanese voice actor voice uh, acting for having too many like sh- like young person voices, mm-hmm. they are much more willing to give Lalafell's very deep yeah, voices I than love the that. English version yeah. ever does. Yeah, I like that's that. That's fair. Um, okay, uh, the scene where you helped Matsuya selling fishes was meant to establish your connection with him, though Nakamura himself failed spectacularly! Same. Hey. Vindication. <laughs> mm. oh. We're like uh, Thancred. Yes, yes, that's right, that's right. Um, okay, patch 6.08, job balance. <laughs> Kamiki-san says, oh, Reaper is strong, isn't it? <laughs> Yoshi yeah, sure <laughs> sure uh, really P says uh, Reaper was created from zero and it was really hard when creating the job it also costs a lot but that explains the completeness of the job uh, existing jobs has always been seriously hard to balance due to having to add new elements on top of an existing job with established play feel from the past pure DPS like samurai or black, uh, blue, uh, black mages are to tell the truth what? As you said blue mage, which just made me think that they, if they had to focus on any balance for it at all. <laughs> I think blue mage is a little bit overtuned anyway, Lucio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, black mages are, to tell the truth, uh, we've been told that they are quite lacking in the damage department. Which, sure, uh, which sure, but if we put uh, in slightly more numbers, it may go overboard easily. However... I don't, I don't necessarily... Black mages are in a strong place numbers-wise, but you obviously lose a lot of that with mobility. Yes. So yeah, true. maybe just buffing them a little bit. Yeah. Okay. However, we do acknowledge that we have been stingy on that department, so we are giving it buffs coming in 6.08. Okay. Good. Uh, Get me back those 100k direct crits. <laughs> uh, the devs do think Dancer should have had uh, should have further damage buffs. Oh, interesting. I've seen this as a common criticism amongst the community that Dancer is undertuned right now. Hmm. Since 6.0, it was... Oh, so he's not going to talk m- more about it. Sorry, he's going to move on to Samurai. Uh, okay. Um, so Dancers n- will probably get a buff. Buffs. They didn't give us a, a patch for that, so that might be further down the line. But yeah, there you go. Maybe there'll be a rework. You yeah. Never know. They like to rework classes every now and then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Since 6.0, it was easier for Samurai to accumulate Kenki. Therefore, the chances of using... <laughs> Iyajutsu. Iyajutsu have increased as well. Initially, the devs saw the need to increase the attack range in order to gr- to, de- to decrease player stress, but they ended up insufficient uh, debugging costs, aka not enough time, and once the 6.05 adjustments released, the players misunderstood that they need to cast more on Iyajutsu. Y- I need a soundboard. I need a soundboard just for the skills of samurai, like red, perfectly, so I can just <laughs> press them. As if the devs are forcing them to become casters. When looking into it, uh, when looking into it, which it was not the case when the devs' actual reason behind the extension of attack range was to implement the initial changes that didn't make it into the expansion release. If you understood any of that, I good. No, <laughs> your your weapon range has doubled for some reason. Live with it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Only for some attacks, Mailer. That's true. That's kind of confusing in a way. I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They... Get an attack dummy. Uh, oh. uh, okay. Um, they plan to raise the jobs... So each job can rest assured that a lot of them will see adjustments as well. They plan to erase the jobs that are consistent, considered busy, but doesn't reflect the DPS it should be outputting. Mm. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, instead of nerfing Reaper, they are thinking of bringing other jobs up to achieve better balance. Oh, Perhaps interesting twist of balance. I yeah. agree. Although that means content has to be balanced around that mm-hmm. going forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number go up. Um, they are looking. So this is now we're moving on to uh, MSQ. Um, uh, they are looking into making NPCs accompanying system. Uh, huh? They are looking into making NPC uh, accompanying systems. A, N, 
making an NPC accompanying system so that you won't end up separating with them when you use the inner city teleport. Oh, now it makes sense. They are looking into <laughs> making the NPC accompanying system so that you won't end up separating with them when you use the inner city teleport. There you go. I did I it. That made all, the, all the sense to you once I added one word. To yeah, it. yeah. Um, that's good. That's, good. that's really annoying. When yes, you have that's to, great. Yeah. It should just be like a buff that the game knows to spawn the NPC next to you. Yeah. It, you it doesn't seem that. Like that's easy with this game. <laughs> wow. True. Spaghetti. Um, well, that's cool. I li like that they're actually working on that, so that's good. Mm. They realized, okay, this is good. This feels good to 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 hear. They realized <laughs> they overdid the NPC pursuing system, so they are looking into adjusting them, especially mm. that one part where you have to pursue the child to unlock hey, ether current <laughs> to the point they thought it'd be fine to just drop it. But whether they will do it or adjust it or remove it uh, is unknown. Don't remove it. Don't it's remove such it. a good quest. Yeah. It's so Leave it all funny in. seeing people fail. Leave uh, it all in, but don't do it in Sasquatch. So the one for the ether current, that's the one in the city? Like in Gar like yeah, with, in Garlemald. Oh, that one's, yeah. That's the one where he like... Where he runs around. Yeah, he runs around. Car. That's yeah, so you, fucked. I understand why he'd do that. I mean, gameplay-wise, it's it's annoying yeah. for people Very who weren't prepared for it. But I can get why a child would be worried about being chased by something <laughs> in a t city full of rap like rampant machines. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It only takes two attempts. Yeah. Once you realize he runs around the car, it's not that bad. Yeah. Um. So there you go. I uh, hide Maybe don't yeah. tie. It, maybe don't tie it to an ether current quest next. Yeah. Time. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, Heidelin's trial for eight man trust is the first to have the trust system implemented. Yeah, that's. I mean, still we don't talk. We I feel like we haven't praised that enough. But that's pretty. That was pretty epic. Super good. It when the, when you good. realize that you can actually do this with the 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 team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to promote it, but due to spoilers, they couldn't. Obviously. Um, so story wise, Yashtola is the only one to completely avoid her mechanics. Uh, lore reason wise it was due to her ability to to detect Heidelin's ether and avoid accordingly i love that i love that they mm. literally make it like lore appropriate even <laughs> like because it would make sense mm. for her to not be able to avoid mm. those because she can see it in in relation to yashtola and her ability to avoid aoe's or uh, attacks i have this is hearsay so i don't know if this is necessarily true because okay. the HP obviously hasn't confirmed it is that she is more likely to get hit by attacks in dead dead ends because there is less ether. Oh, that's even cooler. Um, all right. Uh, the first two strikes uh, is meant for Astinian to completely consume or nullify. And since he's not the character to stand by and observe, he tends to observe his opponent's action and avoid accordingly. Okay. That's as, cool as, as well. He learns as he goes through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you're wondering who the person, who what per, uh, which person to follow, that would be Yashtola. <laughs> so because she will avoid everything. Um, the battle was made with great She's focus. She's a Dorito. She is the Dorito. She's a Dorito. Yeah, the battle was made with great focus on Scion's behavior and actions. So even more reason to appreciate that that fight mm -hmm. with trusts. I didn't wasn't. That bad though, because you basically do a mini version of it with Vanar before, anyway. Yeah. Oh so, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've mentioned this before. I still wiped once because Alize stacked. Wow. Well, yeah, Alize <laughs> killed you. But <laughs> if Alize wasn't there, you'd have been able to do it first try. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Can you even replay that fight, or is that not possible right now? Yeah, you can. Okay. It's available through the trust system. You can open oh, it that way. Oh. Okay. I haven't checked that. All right. That's cool. Uh, each segment and parts of Endwalker has its own theme that reflects the past expansions. So Prologue is A Realm Reborn, Thavnir is Heavensward, Garlemald is Stormblood, and Elpis is Shadowbringers. Yeah, I can see that. It kind of makes sense. Yeah, because the Dragon Song War is in Thavnir, A Realm Reborn. Xenos. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, Ancient. Is a realm yeah. Are they just talking about the part on the boat? Yeah. Well, they also, I mean... And the Rising Stones bit. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, but Charlian deals Charlian. with a lot of uh, a Realm Reborn centric things. Like when we read the lore stuff, I guess 
Okay. No, anything right. with labyrinth. That one was a little bit of a stretch. I see that. <laughs> mostly the boat. <laughs> the boat. The boat was mostly a realm. Actually, that was 1.0 to be fair. That's more 1.0. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I completely do ignore labyrinthos, but maybe that is part of it. Oh yeah, labyrinthos. Even though it's not really I don't that. Really see Ramadan, the link but... to be perfect. Hydalin. Uh, Hydalin. Uh, Kryl being possessed by her. Kind I of mean, okay. Little... To be fair, Charlian should be the Realm Reborn link because it's been it's been mm. brought up a lot. It's where everyone's from. Oh, all so the is Garlem old day. Let's yeah, not. but that was the main focus of Shadow. No, sorry, of uh, Stormblood. Technically, Stormblood. like the big oppressor in, in Stormblood. Stormblood is, yeah, Stormblood has ended up being the expansion where Garlem old is the most direct threat to us. Yes, that's true. But I feel like they were. The biggest antagonist of a Realm Reborn, or at least up, at least two point oh. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, it literally ends with you storming a Galleon. That's true. The Praetorium. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Garlemald has always been around. It's always been around. But thematically, I suppose it is a bit like Stormblood. But I mean, Stormblood—they were the big bad of Stormblood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, uh, Endwalker MSQ will be added into New Game Plus in patch 6.1, so there you go. I believe that's much earlier than normal. Yeah? I yeah, it feels it. Yeah, they, they, cause they, when did Shadowbringers go into New Game Plus? Like, I thought it wasn't in, I thought Shadowbringers wasn't until 6.3. 5.3? Yeah. 5.3, sorry, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. It's like nine that's months. the story... That's when the Shadowbringer story was completed. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, yeah, Endwalkers is already completed, so they can add it in 6.1. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, Yoshi P, uh, looking forward to seeing the faces of all Warriors of Light when reaching Elpis. That sounds like they haven't yet. Uh, that's odd. But I guess just I assume... when pe when people get into Elpis. I th yeah, yeah, I assume he just means watching streamers. Oh, reach Elpis. right. When he's watching uh, me, a uh, speaker's place. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. He just watched yeah. yeah. When that uploads in about. He's like, when is the time. next episode? When is the next episode? <laughs> um, all right. Send us some of your spare parts. <laughs> we know you've got some new ones. We'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Send us mug mail. Send <laughs> Speakers.com <laughs> slash Um All right. Um, Emmet Selk related goods may appear in the future. So that's merch. Uh, now that his. Probably yes. based on his Elpis appearance. Yes. I think they, I think they didn't like his Shadowbringers appearance that's as much. So that's so weird. They didn't want to make too much merch based on it. I kind of like that because it's so it like. It's iconic to iconic. me. Iconic. Yeah. Like the hunch and the weird it, like yeah, hair. It's still hard to think of him as his real form. I prefer yeah. the. Uh, I think I. I pr Shadow. I think of him in his main form, in his original form now more. So I still don't. I mean, I, I like it. He has the same f sort of face that I imagine. It's still his face, uh, yeah, which makes it easier to think of him like that, I guess. Yeah. But it has less wrinkles than his older form. I think that's true. I guess but a little bit. I like yeah. I like it. I like yeah. both. Yeah, I like both. Uh, all right, um, Garlemald, uh, the Garlemald segment was created with divisive opinions in mind. Just because you have your own justice doesn't mean the others will resonate with you. I've seen this a lot. I've seen a lot of people get very frustrated with the other with the Garleans in Garlemald. See, yes, but I, yeah, but it's not that simple. That's very black and white. That's very baby. Like just going, oh, they are angry at us. They are bad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you not understand that this is like people that have lived in this very oppressive? It's not oppressive to them. They don't think so, anyways. But like that's just propaganda. Yeah, some of them might. They've lived in a fascist state for mm. yeah. their whole lives. That's what they turn into. That's why that's so dangerous. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I was angry initially because I'm like, oh my god, there's so much pushback. It was very <laughs> annoying. Um, but you start to think, you know, that's how it is. You know, that's mm -hmm. why it's so difficult to break nations like that because the people are wholly dedicated to that uh, idea. Um, but yeah, okay. Uh, the quest in from the cold was actually much harder initially. Sometimes the checks did uh, slipped by the project manager. Uh, who is actually much uh, more casual and light player <laughs> compared to most skilled players. And it ended up in the release, and when they found out players complained about the content being too hard, the devs ended up going, ouch. Give us the original Savage version of In From The Cold. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of... Cowards. 
is a weirdly worded thing. So it was it was harder initially, but the project manager missed that and it ended up in the release anyway. Yes. So it was the same difficulty or what? No, I believe... So, so I've read other translations of this particular part saying that initially it was even harder. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he toned it down a bit, but it still is hard. Mm. Well, yeah. Because he didn't... It's difficult, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I would like to try the, the even harder version, but please don't <laughs> nerf it too much. No. I mean, it doesn't get nerfed on your initial playthrough, I believe. You have to die That's first. That's true, yeah, yeah. You get the choice it, it's the such version. a... It felt so much better to be on, like, low health when you're crawling at the end. It just... It mm-hmm. was really well done. Yeah. And it, I would be sad to for people to lose that. Yeah. Uh, regarding Xenos, uh, it was hard to deal with Xenos's role in Endwalker. <laughs> he is by far the one that doesn't see you as a hero, but merely an adventurer, and to us, an extra uh, element rather than the final boss. Okay. Uh, to me, it, yeah. I don't know... <sighs> how legit it is but it kind of feels like they when they did endwalker endwalker they were kind of annoyed that they had to deal with xenos <laughs> they had this other story yeah, they really wanted to tell doing. and they're like oh fuck we have xenos to deal with if xenos had died after saying farewell my only friend he would have gone down as I an hundred percent decent agree. yeah villain i liked him in stormblood and yeah. people really well, turned on him very quickly yeah, and I thought it was kind of boring in Stormblood, but I liked his ending. The ending um, was yeah. good. Yeah, and you know, honest, I kind of like his ending here as well. <laughs> no, I like his ending. I here, do. But please leave it but... at this. Yeah, don't please l- leave him there. Oh, but I feel like they he's won't. He's coming so... back. Yeah, I, I guarantee I he's think, coming back. I think he is. Um, the thing is with Sinos is that even even if we um. I was going to say, we've seen him die now, but we've already seen him die before, so it doesn't matter. We He he, he literally, like, we saw him blo- bleed, mm-hmm. uh, and he, yet he still came back, so, yeah. Um, He's the, the less funny Team <clears throat> Rocket now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and yeah. he's definitely a James. Yes. <laughs> um, the scene that contains the fist fight with Xenos allowed players with different races, especially Lava Fells, to enjoy them in different ways. It is indeed a fist fight where the Warrior of Light u- utilizes the power of uh, Dynamis. All cutscenes are composed differently for different races. It's yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I'd love to watch the. People always say I'd love to watch the Lava one. I'd love to watch the Rogadin one. Oh, yes. It'd get absolutely clobbered. <laughs> Um, yeah we've talked about that Yoshi P was especially particular about uh, um, about the fight with Heidelin it broke Yoshi P into tears whenever he he has to do uh, PND checks for the scene that involved dialogue selections with Vena Vena Vena's in JP version oh is that the name is that uh, it's just with an S um yeah uh, the the model of Heidelin was designed based on Yoshitaka Amano's mm. uh, Amano Sensei's art style, and it took the dev a month to pass. That's the best Amano representation in game. Probably. It really is. It really looks just like it. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, I would say it's on the same level as Warrior of Light to me. Warrior of Light does look good. Oh, that's true. And the Omegas are pretty decent. Yeah, but, but it was it was weird seeing it because it's on the box. Of like mm. a realm reborn, yeah, uh, it was weird. Um, yeah, impressive, very impressive. Uh, that's um, that's that. That's the radio mog station. Glad they changed the name of the cash shop so they could introduce this new concept. <laughs> yes, with the uh, chocobo. Use of the... Yeah, the I... use of the term mog station. In my I opinion, agree. yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Um, okay, well there you go. Um, that's that. Let's uh, we have a mog mail, so I think we'll just uh, we'll jump into that, and then we will talk about all the the upcoming expansions of server uh, stuff as well. So don't go anywhere. Here's mog mail, mog mail, mog mail. This is from Azora Akari from Goblin. Uh, Whoa, Goblin? 
I've been doing Palace of the Dead uh, recently to level some jobs, and I'm reminded by how much I love Deep Dungeon and missed it during Shadowbringers. With Palace of the Dead being the only one getting any attention and Heaven on High being dead, the prospect of a new Deep Dungeon this patch cycle has me very excited. But the big question, where will it be? The MSQ dropped a few hints as to what they could do. In Labyrinthos, they mentioned how they'll, they're still digging into the earth and it's full of monsters. It could also be another well, uh, well-intentioned but ultimately dangerous Loperate mission on the moon. Heck, they could even make up something to do with Ultima Thule. What do you guys think? Where are we going to run? Uh, where are we going to run into a landmine, then a toad trap, followed by a luring trap, and another landmine, landmine next? If you're running into that many landmines, you're already dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. I agree. Heaven and high is rubbish. <laughs> yeah. I feel I like they should have uh, added on to Palace of the Dead more. Yeah. Like, just uh... add in more palette swaps and add in more... Just keep one deep dungeon and add to it. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Mm. I liked having a new story. Yeah. Um, I That's don't... True. I think it should be on the moon because we already have the Excitatron 6000. I feel like it might repeat certain uh, aesthetics. Right. Mm. Yeah. Plus, it's still meant to be our, you know, spaceship to go to a, a better future in some awful event. <laughs> Why yeah. would it have just this crypt of death on it? I mean, that's what Smileton is. Technically, uh, Smileton well, is yeah. Smileton is Yeah, but that's only an error. It'll yeah, be fixed. that's true. We've killed the big cheese. Uh, what's, to, what's to stop them from making another era mailer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Thule yeah. could be interesting. Ultima Thule is 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 the place where that mm. could happen. Or um, the Senate. You just go through all the different rooms of the. Senate. Oh, the Senate. Yeah, because because <laughs> that's like mysteriously still yeah. standing. That's why it's the new Or deep maybe dungeon. underneath the Tower of Babel is a huge, mm. like, marquee crypt. Yeah, yeah. Or the crypt of, like, the emperors. Oh, mm. Emperor Zande's tomb. Well, that's in that's in Mordona. Let's go back to Mordona. <laughs> Mela, that's actually not a bad... That would be cool, but weird. If if the next deep dungeon is in a realm, in a, a realm reborn area, that would be weird. Um, I could see it being in Elpis. Elpis would be mysterious. interesting. Yeah, they, they had a lot of mysterious fair, though, buildings. They already had the really good possibility for a deep <clears> dungeon <throat> that they used as that dungeon instead. Yeah. Is yeah. 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 So that would have worked perfectly. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's a good. That's good because they could hide that because of the technology they have. Technology, whatever you call it, the magic. Um, it wouldn't be very interesting, but they could justify it as like, you're you're a some you're a familiar. Let's yeah. test you against all the other creatures we've created in this horrible maze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, technically, we haven't really helped much in this uh, question because we've literally mentioned every zone, I think, <laughs> at this point. Every zone is possible. Uh, we've decided that it's not It's not, not Thavnir. Thavnir. It's not Thavnir. <laughs> it's, it's not Thavnir. It could... No, it couldn't be Labyrinthos. We've already seen all of its secrets. Mm. Y- yeah. I mean, we've and let Archie we can into the the star. The, yeah, that's true. It could be part of the live stream. Oh, there. it could be. It could be like on the way down there, but mm. nah, that would be madness. But oh, but no, because do you remember in Palace of the Dead? Oh yeah, the dead when people. We fought the dead people. <gasps> That's it true. Even we already have people. the con. Now we have made it. Now we've literally mentioned every area, so you're mm. welcome. Except for Thavnir, yeah. though. We are pretty sure on that. Not Thavnir. Or the moon. <laughs> or the moon. Or the moon. Yeah, there you go. But it also could be in a realm of <laughs> Yeah, also just throw that in there to make it even worse. <laughs> there you go. We're good at answering questions. All right. Um, let's move on. Um, we need to talk about. The massive server expansion plans that have been presented um, by Yoshi yeah. P on the Lodestone. This is pog. Mm-hmm. It's pretty poggers. Um, this was posted just a few days ago as of this recording. Um, it is still on the Lodestone. If you're watching on a man link to the full thing, it's in the description. All right. Um, 
it goes as follows. Regarding the expansion of Final Fantasy XIV's operations. This is a very long post, so we're just going to stop. Like, we'll have a few breaks in between and discuss here. Uh, hello, everyone, and Happy New Year. This is producer and director Naoki Yoshida. I thank you for sticking with us through 2021 and ask for your continued support in 2022. Since officially launching on December 7th last year, Endwalker has experienced extremely high levels of congestion, causing our players a great deal of frustration. The task of rebalancing jobs also remains, and we will continue working on this and other adjustments. While certain worlds continue to experience congestion during peak times, our plan to fundamentally address the problem is beginning to take shape, and I'd like to share the roadmap with you. Before I proceed, just a warning that this announcement covers a wide range of subjects. A series of cutscenes will play. <laughs> um, and it's quite long. Though I explain things in order, feel free to skip to the sections that interest you. We will, we will go through it all. Uh, so make sure you have a sufficient time set aside for this, everyone. Uh, we'll start with another post uh, that covers more about this subject than in the initial post. Uh, it's about the Oceanian Data Center which opens on Tuesday, January 25th. Um, very soon. That's very, very, very soon. Very soon. Yeah. Uh, we are pleased to announce the opening of our new data center in Oceania uh, will be taking place on Tuesday, 25th of January, 2022, around 10 a.m. GMT. And for the first time, I think, ever, yeah, I know. 9 ever, p.m. AEDT. <laughs> Two Australian... weeks. Australian... Uh, Eastern, Eastern Daylight, daylight time. time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks <laughs> two weeks earlier than originally planned. Ooh, um, two weeks earlier. Yeah, look at that. You uh, guys the opposite to... of Endwalker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh so new data center and new world. So the physical data center is the Oceanian data center. The log where is it? The log Tell me where it is. <laughs> well, they did do it in AEDT, so it's probably yeah in that in the time zone. Half. Yeah. That's where the majority of Australia is. Well, you know, what? about anything <laughs> west of Canberra? Oh, wow. Georgi doesn't like west. There's poor Perthians. <laughs> poor Perthians. <laughs> All right. Uh, the new logical data center on the Oceanian data center is called Materia. We knew that I already. Like Why am we I presenting that? Is that that's brand new <laughs> materia? They should have yes. called it Heaven's Uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the world on the materia data center is called Bismarck. Nice one. Literally, no one will go there. No one's gonna play on Bismarck. Ravana, Sephiroth, Sophia, and Zervan. That's cool. Fine. cool. Four cool ones. Mm -hmm. And one ultra lame one. That's like the yeah. Moogle of Australia. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. We're going to get so. Oh, no French people are watching this. No, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, so there you go. That's. Uh, that, there you go. Materia. Um, I'm so glad to finally have the names. With four good it's, yeah, names. Yeah, same. Yeah. They could have They could have gone jokey. They could have, yeah. Called them, you know. <laughs> Craftsman's courage or whatever, but they they went for this. Uh huh. Uh huh. We still don't have a Maricidia world. No. 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 True. But you're pretty close. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So with that comes character creation bonuses, uh, yes, which you know it's it's what you'd expect. I th I don't think this is new. Uh, so on all worlds on um on this new data center. You'll get double EXP bonus until level 80. Uh, a gift of 10 silver chocobo feathers. Exchangeable for low, mid-level gear. Oh, I thought you said gold for a second. <laughs> I was going to no. go oh, very surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. For low, mid-level gear to improve the leveling experience. And bonuses for character created during bonus period that attain level 30 in any class will ga gain a gift of 1 million gil. A million gil. A million gil. <laughs> uh, gift of 15 days of free playtime times two. That's already cool too. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Um, which. But not if you're on a trial. Oh no, no, never mind. It doesn't say times two. It's actually asterisk. It's an actual asterisk. Number one, the one million gil is once per service account, and a uh, gift of 15 days free uh, playtime is limited to once per service account when creating a new well, character on. Either a new or preferred world. 
I guess I'm making a character and getting to level 30. Yeah. Even, I mean, <clears throat> even a week. You guys can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> it's 15 free days of time. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh my god. That is a bad idea. More. That's not a good choice, really, is it? That's so oh, really? people are just going to flood. So they're going to get false data for like the first yeah. uh, month. Like, oh my, they're going to be like, oh my god, there's so many people playing. And then they'll everyone leaves after level 30. I think they'll realize because I think they can see where people are playing from. That's yeah. true. That's true. Well, be nice to the Australians, everyone. Yes, yes. Don't Let them have their own and server. The, and yeah. the Southeast Asians, because they'll probably move to the Oceania server as well, oh, since yeah. the Japanese servers are very Japanese-focused. <laughs> That's true. 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 Uh, you also get uh, so bonuses for transferring to New Worlds. So the Home World Transfer Service is free of charge. Uh, That's you'll get really the good. double EXP bonus until level 80, valid for 90 days following transfer, um, which is newly added. Apparently, this wasn't. This is a new thing, I guess. So I don't think they've done it before. Because mm. it doesn't. It doesn't have to be a preferred world, I guess. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Look what happens if you love oh. worlds. Uh oh! For He's private. Joking. For oh, gift of ten gold chocobo feathers, You're exchangeable joking. for special rewards such as rare mounts, Mela. That's bonkers. Yeah. Private estate uh, owners of private estates slash apartments are entitled to a certain amount of compensation in gil. Now, asterisk follows <laughs> very long. For private estates, do not relinquish the land, but remove all furnishings. Oh, this is so spaghetti. But remove all furnishings and your estate hall, and then apply for a home world transfer. For apartments, do not Vacate the apartment, but remove all your furnishings and then apply for a home world transfer. Please note that if you have relinquished the deed to your plot or the rights to your property, you will not be eligible to receive guild compensation. Why is it so formal? Do not! Right to your property. It's your property. <laughs> you own property. It's your property. Yeah, 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 yeah. I own real estate. That's right. Do not! I love that. It's all in caps, by the way. It's very funny. Well, yeah. 14 property is very valuable, mail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you remember there was that thing about like MMO housing and 14 was by far the most yeah. expensive, exclusive property. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, these incentives will remain in place until the active player populations of the worlds in question have grown to a specified number. Please note that once a world has been removed from the preferred world category, the various bonuses will no longer be applied. In the case of newly created characters, these bonuses will continue for 90 days, including the day of creation, regardless of any change in world status. So there you go. Mm. You'll keep it for 90 days. Sale of plot and uh, plots and apartments. The various residential districts on the new worlds will be unavailable at launch in order to That's provide good. an opportunity for both existing and new players to purchase housing. This restriction will be lifted when the sale of plots and apartments begin in patch 6.1. Yeah, this is similar to when they added new servers to existing data centers as well. They like Oh, that was so funny, all the people going to Spriggan and be like, oh, get me a house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um players will not be able to travel to the residential districts, with the exception of the first ward of Imp uh, Imperium, which will be open for display only. As such, you will not be able to progress or complete the following quests until the sale of plots and apartments begin in patch 6.1. So that's all the unlocked oh, quests. That's for really house. spaghetti. That I know. I like that they <clears throat> can't turn off the purchase of plots. Yeah, that's, that's really so weird. funny. <laughs> uh, so there you go. That is the Oceanian data center. Uh, congratulations, Australia and uh, surrounding areas. Oceania, I guess. Congratulations, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, they also mentioned the World Transfer Service. I guess I'll just mention that again. There's a, they mentioned that it, it is returning. Uh, recommencement of the Home World Transfer Service. Due to server congestion following the launch of Endwalker, the Home World Transfer Service is currently suspended. However, with logins becoming less concentrated due to players making progress and the Oceanian data, data center now ready, we'll be resuming the service on Wednesday, January 26th, uh, 2022. This comes one day after the Oceanian data center opens on January 25th in order to ensure a smooth and stable launch. Mm. We'll use the time to confirm that the data center can operate without issue, handling logins and normal play when it goes live. We ask for your understanding and cooperation in this matter. That's good, actually, because I was expecting, you know, there's going to be a lot of people transferring just to get the bonus, maybe. Um, mm. uh, but, yeah. Also, just a reminder, even though the transfer is free, it's only free for the one time. 
So if you're thinking oh, you yeah. can go like s- jump back and forth, you have to pay for that other one. So and also I think yeah. there's a, isn't there a cooldown as well? There is a cooldown. Yeah, oh, you have to so stay in Australia. Be is it beware. Two weeks or a month. It's, it's quite it's long. Than you'd like. Yeah. 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 It's not worth it. For Ninety, 90 days. days. Ninety not days. Not worth it. That's yeah. Even though the, the transfer 10 gold is, free, is good. But... Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, furthermore, uh, upon resumption, the Homeworld Transfer Service will be available to all players in all data centers, not only to those transferring to the Oceanian data center. Those who wish to change home worlds may do so, with the exception of transfers to certain congested worlds. So there you go. Um, you might not even be able to transfer back. No. No. Oh. Uh, in response to congestion, so this is about the uh, launch of data center travel system. In response to congestion following Endwalker's release, we had postponed the launch of the data center travel system. It is now being planned for a 6.1, uh, 6.1x patch. To briefly explain how the system works, here we go. <laughs> some explanation of some mm-hmm. data center travel system. Uh, players will be able to visit worlds in other logical data centers within the same physical data center. Players will not be able to visit worlds in other regions slash physical data centers. Though cross-region travel is technically possible, implementation is still under consider- consideration. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Still under consideration? J- yeah, which so means... they're not even committed to it. No. Mm. That's good, though. Yeah. That's good? That's good? Potentially. You still want to, like, have the regions locked off, like... No, as in it means... that. They haven't I mean, decided that they won't do it. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. it's still up in the like, air. It could, yeah, 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 we yeah. could still be able to play with some of the Americans and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, travel is initiated not while logged into the game, but from the character selection screen. So you actually have That's to like... That's weird. Button. Yeah, you have to yeah. log out. No, well, I can get that. I imagine it's much it's more... It's a bigger operation. ...for a character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have to remember, despite all these new fancy things we're getting, this game is still built on top of spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, As I previously mentioned in a live letter, while the system has been designed to allow cross-region travel, we'll be limiting it to travel between logical data centers within a physical data center at first, due in part to differences in game economy and values. Okay, that's an interesting... As in, like, moral values. Yeah, moral values. weird reason. I mean, game economy... Yeah, the game economy I don't really buy, because that wasn't even a... Problem it when... didn't really change even once World Visit was available. And are the uh, economies that different from region to region? Maybe JP. It's the only thing I can imagine having like a wildly different economy. But mm. NA and oh, EU I've definitely. I've got to be honest with you. If you're going to travel to a Japanese data center just to get a Frontier dress for 100 gil cheaper, <laughs> it's not. No one, like only a I... very few amount of people will do that. I the japanese game uh, economy is more expensive to mm. be honest yeah probably true mm-hmm. but it, not enough people would do that to justify blocking them off i think we need to just create an, a central bank of aorcia to regulate the gill and um there we go we own property mm-hmm. we have a central bank we're a real society we're a real <laughs> place um it's weird. I don't see... I, I think maybe it's... Uh, to me, the problem would be the same as it was when we had a data... Uh, sorry, uh, the uh, world visit, which mm. was that uh, for a couple of days, the economy kind of almost buckled a little on some servers, but then they quickly recovered and they all sort of got the same sort of economy almost. Like it just mm-hmm. evened itself out. I feel like there's no difference here, but there's the moral values, Mela, as Mela mentioned. That's mm. that's truly <laughs> that's the... a big one. <laughs> I do. Have, I have to say, I also love the use of logical data center versus physical data center, as if a lot of people, a lot of the lay people reading this, will understand the difference. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's weird that they don't uh, go into explaining that more because they love explaining things. No. So I'm surprised they don't explain what a logical data center is. I think that is a. a relatively complex idea well not complex yeah easy to explain but like it's a it kind of choose to read they kind of tease it like in the european thing but specifically uh, when we get to it yeah they'll use the term and you'll understand what it yes. is yes so stay tuned you learn for the, the yeah you learn the language as we go through yeah yeah uh, we'll be paying keen attention to the options of players as we consider whether or not to introduce Opinions. huh 
Did I we're paying Ooh, keen attention to the opinions oh, sorry, of players as we consider whether or not to introduce cross-region travel in the future. Compared I, I to say, do. say they want it. Mm. Yeah, do that. Compared to the world visit system we already have in place, the data center travel system. Very I mean, that's it, it's a long name for it. Um, yeah, the DCT. Yeah. The <laughs> No, it's the DCTS. DCTS. No, we can we can drop the system. Yeah, DCT. Yeah, data center travel. The we DCT. Don't, we don't call it the world visit system. We just call it world visit. Yeah, WV. Well, we don't say that. We don't say <laughs> that. that. <laughs> so we'll just say well, data center w, travel. But w, even w, data v. center travel is very long. WV is more syllables than world visit. That's true. Oh, DC but travel. DT, we'll DC, say DC, DC travel, travel probably. That's probably going to be the. Mm-hmm. the that would word. make more sense. Yeah. Um, sorry, uh, it will be, uh, compared to the world visit system we already have in place, the data center travel system will be subject to more restrictions, uh, for those functions that are managed per logical data center, such as free company chat and cross world link shells. This is due to the fact that it isn't possible to keep an eye on chat and cross world servers outside the bounds of a logical data center. <clears throat> That's fine. That yeah. Yeah. Aside from that, however, there are just about no restrictions. So Ooh. that's good. Be it undertaking quests, forming parties, or using the duty finder, you'll be able to play the game as usual. If you have a means to communicate with others, such as the lodestone or the companion app, <laughs> it should be possible to form static parties. He can't I mention mean, outside. Yeah. Statuses. I love communicating via not only the companion app, but Ooh, on the lodestone. lodestone. <laughs> How does that I, even work? Do you write on people's walls? Like hey, what? You, you remember, write a blog post. Uh, I got my first FC by a friend finding an FC from the Lodestone. Oh my god, that is so Back ancient in 2013. Yeah, exactly. My first link shell was on the forum. Oh my! And I like, yeah, you know, couldn't contact them. Even the forum is like a relic at this point. Oh, no one uses the forum anyway, except well, really angry people. Yeah, that's where the angry people <laughs> go to vent. Um, yeah, and eventually they'll run out because they'll all get banned. That's true. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, if you want to join a free company or link shell in another data center, you'll need to transfer your home world, but we think that the system will otherwise provide an enjoyable experience. We ask for your patience just a little longer. I think all we wanted was to be able to do content, so fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, I like this. Wants, I think. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise, what's the point of having you know closed off service in the first place if you could do everything by travel? Do you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Next, now we're talking about the actual expansion of services here. So expansion of jet. Well, we've talked about Oceania, but now we're talking about expansion of existing ones. Um, mm -hmm. Expansion of Japanese data centers. Currently, our Japanese data... This surprised me a little bit, uh, that they were talking about expansions of da Japanese yeah, data centers. Um, currently, this isn't actually an expansion. No, it isn't. It, this, this, is a the, this is a sundering. Yeah, wow. it is. It is. Uh, currently, our Japanese data center comprises three logical data centers and 32 worlds. They like to not feel like there are other people ruining their game experience. <laughs> in 2013, when A Realm Reborn was released, we aggressively increased the number of worlds to cope with congestion. As a result of this, we now have a situation where 10 to 11 worlds are handled by each logical data center, making efficient operation impossible. As a result, <laughs> we are unable to increase the number of simultaneous logins per world in the same manner as with the North American and European data centers, leading to extreme congestion. Therefore, from a long-term perspective, we're looking to add one more logical data center and lower the volume of worlds per logical data center, thereby significantly increasing the maximum number of concurrent logins possible by several thousand per world. So the number of logical data centers will now go up from three to four, which uh, will leave the number of worlds the same. Capacity, overall possible simultaneous logins encompassing all worlds increased by 50,000 or more. So that must That's have good. been really tight. The, like the whatever, mm. that, they must have had yeah. a worse time than we've had. Well, in the English-speaking community, yeah, we were focusing on Europe. It, must, it sounds like the Japanese community had it even worse. Yeah, we, I didn't really hear anything from uh, J JP. No. Um, well, it's, uh, even if 
you like because you remember we went on that world that had like two bots and that was it. <laughs> yes. Even if you're on a server like that, because they're all on the same logical center, you have to suffer for the popular worlds. Yeah, I think. that's true. Yeah. Um, we believe that taking into account the floor space of the data center where the servers are physically housed on oh. the current... Whoa, whoa, you missed a bit. Oh, you sorry. You missed Whoopsie, Daisy. Awesome to this end, sorry, we would like to ask you to bear with us as we reconfigure the composition of worlds from a three logical DC configuration of 10, 11, 11 to a four Gross. logical DC configuration of 8, 8, 8, 8. That is fine. When I... When I was yeah, it is satisfying. When I was scrolling through this, I thought they were talking about a DNS because that's all. Yeah, that's what I thought I too. Number. Yeah. And then I read it and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. We believe that taking into account the floor space of the data center where the servers are physically housed and the current semiconductor shortage, this will be the fastest and most efficient method for large scale expansion. In terms of community the maintenance. The size of the room. What? Yeah. They're essentially yeah. talking about the size of the room. Oh, yeah, that's right. As served, as yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of community maintenance, this will involve. Thanks a... to the vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> this will involve a partial regrouping of worlds, which we understand will cause a great deal of inconvenience to players using the Japanese data center. We intend to do everything in our power to mitigate this by implementing data center transfer and through use of the home world transfer service. We offer our sincere apologies in advance for any trouble this will cause and appreciate your cooperation in this matter. The installation of new logical data centers and large-scale changes to world configuration are currently scheduled to be implemented around July 2022. This will allow us to take the needed time to carefully analyze the situation and prevent matching imbalances in each logical data center. Once again, we ask for your understanding as we proceed with this important upgrade. <clears throat> so that's JP. Sad in a way for some people, probably because there might be some broken statics, but yes, otherwise, it makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, with world with data center transfer or world DCT. data center visit, yeah. in DC the DCT, yeah, um, they should be able to still form statics. It's just that's true as long as they communicate yeah, via the companion app, true, or the lodestone. Oh, don't forget the lodestone. Sorry, yeah, do not forget the lodestone. <laughs> Expansion of North American data centers. Uh, currently, the North American data center house, houses three logical data centers and 24 worlds, an 888 configuration. So mm -hmm. if you haven't picked up already, exactly, physical is literally the region. The, 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 yeah, that's, that's the... So uh, Europe... And then the two logicals are light and yeah, the other yeah. one. Well, yeah, but more specifically, Chaos. physical is literally the, the box that the mm -hmm. server is in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And logical is the, the split between them. Mm. So there we go. We've solved it now. In order to cope with a drastic increase in player population, we are planning a two-phase major server expansion. Due to the global shortage of semiconductors... It has taken mm -hmm. considerable time to procure server equipment, but the schedule calls for the first phase to be implemented around August 2022, with the second mm -hmm. phase to follow in the spring or summer of 2023. That's quite good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, in the first phase of the expansion, scheduled for August 2022, one new logical data center will be established and four new worlds will be added under it. In the second phase of the expansion, we plan to add four more new worlds under the newly established logical DC, resulting in a four logical DC configuration of 8888. Nice. While we had originally, which is annoying because un from August until, uh, until when was the last part? Uh, spring, summer. Spring, summer. It's spring, going to be 8884. Oh, I can so. live with that now. Yeah. Well, you're not on a North American server, but also, <laughs> who wants to move to a data center that's only got four worlds of people? <laughs> True. That's fair, but for new people coming into the game, they can just start there. Yeah. But 8884 at least is a multiple. Yeah, that's true. It's mm. not 10, 10, 11. That's <clears throat> right. It looks more like a DNS. Mm. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, while we had originally hoped to add all eight new worlds at once in August 2022, the aforementioned semiconductor shortage has dictated that we introduce the upgrade in two stages. Uh, again, we ask for your understanding and patience in this matter. In addition to uh, the above... Yeah? Any, uh, it's just at least they're, you know, 
they said that they're doing this and they're actually moving forward with their plan. So yes, that's mm-hmm. good. Yeah, they have they have dates. They uh, that's, exactly. So that's, yeah. Mm-hmm. In the, in addition to the above, we are also considering a yet larger scale upgrade at the time of oh. ne- the next major expansion, patch 7.0. We will be sure to update you with further details regarding this as our plans take shape. This is also like really interesting because it really uh, sh- shows how um, good the game is doing. Like they have big plans for expansion. They're committed to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. the next one is well, besides Oceania being an entirely new region. The, the next one we're about to talk about really shows the increase yes. in the popularity of the game. Yes. But uh, 7.0 it will be sort of summer, autumn 2023, won't it? Ooh, that's a bit hopeful. Yeah. Well, on like the usual schedule, it would be around there, wouldn't it? Depends it depends on I what suspect the it's gonna be world winter again, is like, Mela. Mela. Winter, yeah. Even so, that's only like half a year after they've done the second phase of this and they're doing yeah. yet a bigger expansion. That's true, mm. yeah. So that's pretty cool. It's hard to like to, to plan stuff like this, I think, because mm. the world is still very shaky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's all so right. fascinating that planning this now at the end of a storyline. Like they, yes. they, mm. they are theorizing that the game will continue to gain increasing popularity despite the fact that they have essentially finished a major part of the game yeah yeah Yeah. that's very exciting uh okay the this part uh uh, shook me a little this is the most important part (laughs) This this was so surprising yes expansion of the european data centers uh current part <laughs> Currently, the European data center comprises two data centers and 12 worlds, and that's a, a measly six six configuration. Hey. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you won't be the smallest data center soon. True, that's it true. It used to be five five. It used to just be, and then it was like ten before to, that. It used to just be ten. No, yeah. no, eight. eight. Oh, yeah. It used to just be eight. Yeah, used yeah. Just yeah. Be eight. And then they made it five five. Yeah. In order to accommodate the substantial increase in player population, we are planning a major server expansion in two phases, similar to that planned in the North American oh. data center. Due to the o- <sighs> due to the ongoing global semiconductor shortage, it will take time for requisite server equipment to be delivered. As such, the first phase of this expansion is scheduled for July 2022, while the second is scheduled for the summer of 2023. So... Uh, In the first phase of the expansion, scheduled for July 2022, so very soon, uh, a total of four new worlds will be added, two under each of the logical data centers presently housed in the European data center. That's already good. That's already good. Yeah, that's good. In the second phase, one new logical data center will be established and eight new (gasps) worlds will be added under it, resulting in a three logical (laughs) DC configuration of 888. That is so good. The aforementioned semiconductor shortage requires we carry out this upgrade in two stages and we ask for your understanding. What's more, in anticip this is even like it's it gets wilder. What's more, in anticipation of further expansion, we are working to secure floor space for a fourth logical data centers. Preparations are also being made in the event the addition of this logical data center is needed earlier than anticipated. Oh my god. It- what? Finally. <laughs> They're Finally. Treating Europeans like humans. Yes. Um, that That's is wild. We're going to go up to pretty much American standards. Yeah, in a you know a year's time. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. weird. And well, yeah, well, close to. Yeah, when we get the fourth one, though, we might be equal. God, imagine we all the names equal. they have to think of for the the servers now. Yeah, I would think, honestly. <laughs> As someone that's not planning on really moving, that's the most exciting part. <laughs> no, I agree yeah. with the names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's crazy. Um, Europe has always been, uh, under, um, what's the word? Yeah, I guess. Yes. Like even like a realm reborn. We, like we said, we had like six, we had six or eight. No, we had six worlds at, at launch. We had six originally. In 1.0, we didn't even have one. Uh, no. Like at launch, there was no. Well, to European. be fair, at launch of a realm reborn, we didn't either. They were in Canada. That's, that's true. The physical data center was in Canada, yeah. Um, and then we got like one 
European data center. No, sorry, mm -hmm. one European server, mind you. In this, I think it, we didn't even use the concept of data centers in 1.0. They just made one called Ragnarok, uh, and they said that's the EU one, even though everything was, I think, hosted in fucking Japan. I don't remember where the servers of 1.0 was located. I think they're literally all in Japan, so it didn't really matter. Jesus. But yeah, that was wild. But here we are. We're getting many, many now. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. In other uh, news, so that's the big I, I server. Say, yeah, go on. I, I can hope Oceania gets at least one more. I find five, five an unsatisfying number. Ooh, true. That's an odd number. Don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there is a, I mean, I think Southeast Asia has a huge 14 population. Mm hmm. It um, does, yeah. So we will see how popular nice this will become after this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, um, there are more news here. Uh, resumption of digital sa sales to new players. Yeah, because remember, you can't buy the game right now. Um, so we need to discuss that. Uh, after due consideration of the following factors, we'll be, we'll be resuming digital sales starting on January 25th, 2022 Same at 5 p.m. the Oceanians. GST. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, opening of the Oceanian data center and the capacity to accommodate additional players, our desire to prove a suitable environment for new players in the Oceania region, and the playtime and login frequency of current players is steadily returning to normal levels. We've seen that on at least on Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. It is very much so. Yeah, it's back to normal. It's like, faster than in America, but yes, happening in Europe now too. Yes. I like the desire to provide the environment for Oceanian players. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That yes. just feels like a, a nice nod, like yes, because Australians have had to suffer quite a lot <laughs> playing on Japanese servers. Own, will we get a better like online Square Enix store? Probably not, <laughs> because this is just fourteen no. related. No, no. So you you're like ten Maybe. years behind Europe in fourteen right now. So you're gonna Maybe. like slowly start to see things. It's gonna trickle, but it'll take another five or ten will years. Will we be able to buy the digital the the box? No, no. You got a you got a server. You got you yeah, got Kyoki, you're so greedy. You got five servers. That's that's more than <laughs> enough. <laughs> you might be able to buy the Final Fantasy 13-2 soundtrack. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um okay. Is making it? Uh, I think so. Uh however, in the event servers continue to experience extreme levels of congestion, we may consider suspending digital sales again. We are aware that certain worlds are experiencing high server traffic at peak times, and while some may consider this decision to resume sales to be premature, we ask for your, under uh, your understanding in this matter. We would also like to resume re registration for the free trial after monitoring server stability a while longer. So, free the free trial will still be suspended, it seems. It's just the digital mm. sales, so purchase of the game. That's fine. Yeah. Um, free, uh, you know... The the free trial people already suffer enough anyway. They can't log in if there's a queue. Right, yeah. yeah. So, so Just buy the game when so, it's available. So do not yeah, register for the free trial. For people that, this is only for the people that are truly committed to it right now. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't need any more looky-loos potentially committing to it. That's too many people at once. Right, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, once again, I wish to apologize for the delays to server expansion caused by the... <laughs> Caused by the global semiconductor shortage, the necessity to, uh, for communities to separate due to the regrouping of worlds is another inconvenience that may prove unavoidable for some players, and we ask for your, under your understanding as we work to alleviate this issue. Despite these hardships, however, we believe this server expansion is a significant step forward in providing players the best gaming experience possible in 14. Work on bolstering Absolutely. the servers will continue well into 2023, expanding a vast amount of financial resources and manpower, but we will do our utmost to ensure this endeavor has no negative impact on your ability to play, so we would appreciate your support while you continue on your adventures. As mentioned earlier, we're also hard at work not only on further job adjustments, but, uh, but other exciting new content for the uh, 6.x series, as well as plans for our next expansion, patch 7.0. Uh, in fact, I have a few announcements planned for the end of February, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled for our next letter from the producer live. Until next time, here's to another great year of Final Fantasy XIV. Naoki Yoshida, Final Fantasy XIV producer and director. Is that nice. on the next producer... So yeah, I'm assuming that's our next That's a while letter. away. End of February. Yeah, that's true. 
That's quite long. Maybe there'll be one. No, he says next. So, yeah. wait. Yeah. So, I think it's a short month, might... though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By three days. I mean, we might... Hmm. This might push 6.1, maybe even to eight, even into April. Yeah. It's potential, unless it's just something they're like, here's the live letter, oh, by the way, it's coming out soon. Yeah. Yeah, but they normally do two live letters before and they do. patch each time. Well, things might be a little different this time, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, at least we know that there is a live letter at the end of February. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there, there you have it. That's it. Um that's uh that's uh, that's the massive server expansion plot oh my god i have the hiccups Ma uh, expansion plans <laughs> uh and it's also the end of the show uh thanks for watching everyone we'll be back next week same time same place remember to follow on twitter at speakers xiv twitch.tv slash speakers of heidelin youtube.com slash speakers xiv exclamation discord in chat if you want to join our discord server if you're watching on demand links in the description uh, remember to send us mog mail speakers xiv.com slash mog mail remember the website might fool you or try to trick you into not sending a mog mail by saying that the site is down it's not it's actually there um stay tuned for the post show we'll be answering questions from the syndicate if you're watching live <sighs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye.